Even though I have limited music theory and I'm far away from a classical pianist, I realized that I know Ableton well enough that I can create tools that obey the rules of music theory. I wanna show you something. What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Inspired By. My name's Will and I make an assortment of music under the moniker Hush Child. This video is sponsored by DistroKid, so make sure you stick around because I'll have a few more words on our sponsor later in the video. Okay, I wanna make this video as to the point and digestible as possible. So going forward, we're gonna cover a few things. We're gonna to touch upon how we can create major and minor chord progressions, especially helpful when we're trying to find a chord progression around a certain sample. And I'm also going to show you how to create more humanistic chord progressions, as well as give you a couple of handy racks that you can download from the Patreon below. So let's just jump into it. So one of the things that I wanna to touch upon, just in case you're not familiar, is the C major scale, because that's where most of our theory is gonna come from in this video. That's from C down here to the C above, the octave, right? So if we start on C, that's called the root note. If we move up four semitones, we get the major third. And if we move up three semitones from that major third, we get the perfect fifth. In the C major scale, these are white notes that are equally spaced from each other. So the first thing that we wanna do is create a major triad. What I want you guys to do is go to MIDI effects and type in chord, or just drag this chord folder down ahead of the instrument you have of choice. And what we're gonna do is firstly leave this shift one position exactly as it is. That's gonna be our root note. With shift two, we're gonna pitch it up for semitones. Now we've got our major third. And with shift three, we're gonna pitch it up seven semitones. And that creates our perfect fifth. So now when we press C, we get that major triad that you heard me play before. The problem with this is once we start moving it up the keyboard, we're not really gonna get any progressions that we're gonna to wanna to use. So let's change that. Now let's go to MIDI effects and let's grab scale. I'm gonna drag scale in and if we open up that folder, we actually get different scale options. So bear that in mind so you can experiment in your own time. For today, what we're gonna do is just grab the major scale and we can drag that on here. So what this scale device is doing is setting any of the nearest notes in keeping with the C major scale. The C major is here in bass and we'll be changing this later. So it's way more tasteful. And we can even go to shift four and hold shift and press down one and that's gonna give it an octave. So we get a slightly bigger chord. This is really exciting, especially when you're trying to figure out a chord progression around a sample. I'm gonna go over here to splice. I'm gonna go into my settings and choose loops. And then I'm gonna choose C major, just for ease, just for now. And then back here in my loops, I'm gonna choose a sample at random. Let's choose this. So let's just try something at random. I'm gonna start with C. Let's see if it's a flute. I'm gonna go into splice and I'm gonna change this to F major and we'll just choose the first sample that's here. This loop is a little bit ear piercing and frankly quite horrible. So I've turned it down a little bit. Let's go down to our chord MIDI device and let's just set this to what were we on F major. So we're gonna set this to F. Notice how all the chord shapes start to change. I'm gonna set it to F, keeping everything else the same. Let's see if we can create a chord pattern on this. I'm gonna bring the octave lower because our lead instrument is higher. Let's try out a progression, here we go. I just wanna say for the record that this isn't a universal rule of thumb. Sometimes you'll still need to play around with the chord until you find something that suits the sample of your choice. And some of the samples will say that they're in F major or a particular key, but they have some rule breaking notes, meaning that they might have some accidentals that slip out of that scale for just one or two beats of the entire loop. Cool, so it works for major. I wanna show you how we can do it with a minor scale even faster, and I wanna keep adding to the humanistic experience of these chord progressions. Check this out. For a minor chord progression, all you need to do 
is just come to shift two and then pitch this down one semitone. That takes your major third to a minor third and we're still keeping that minor triad. But of course you also have to change your chord progression. So to do that, just go to minor and drag in the minor chord progression. I also want to show you this. If you've seen my previous episodes, you'll know that I created the strum rack as well. You can place the strum rack between the chord device and the scale device. And now what that allows you to do is also roll those notes for a desired length of time. Let's try a random sample out for size. We're going to go to our splice settings. We're going to go to G minor. And again, we'll just choose the first sample in here. This is fairly slow, so let's speed this sample up. And we're going to set the bass to G minor. Let's see what we can come up with. Okay, so the final point and what's especially cool is to speed up your workflow, what you can do is select all of these things and then assign them to a group. And in that group, you can set macros. The cool thing about macros is that you can assign these to the shift placements of your chord features or change the scale options or even assign strum or note length or even velocity if you want to, as you're seeing in the time lapse on your screen. Now I've already created this, so you may as well have it as a download. All you have to do is be a member of my Patreon. From there, you can download the automatic chord progression effects rack or the strum effects rack from the link below. And on that quickie note, I hope that's dissipated some of the doom and gloom around music theory. I'm absolutely addicted to the tools that we're looking at in this video. The practices that make my life as a musician much more palatable and stress-free. And that's why I use DistroKid. I've recently released new music, which you can find in the description, and I did so through the use of DistroKid. But one of the main reasons I enjoy using DistroKid is the fact that they have so many tools that allow me to promote my music. From mini videos, to hyper follow, to even promo cards. DistroKid has everything that you need all in one place and I genuinely think it's one of the easiest ways to release and promote your music on all the platforms. If you want to start releasing your music with DistroKid, make sure you use the link in the description below because you'll get 7% off your entire year. So there we have it guys, I hope today's video squashed some of the anxiety and doom and gloom around music theory. As always you can download the strum effects rack from my previous episode over at Patreon as well as today's pre-made chord progression rack as well. I absolutely love chatting to you guys in the comments. So if you made it this far in the video, do let me know and fill me into what you want to see in future videos. If it was helpful, give it a like. And as always, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell icon as it truly helps out this channel to continue its growth. And as per, I thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you next time. Thank you.